Mike, turn your games down. Hi, we're going to have another recovered episode of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Helberton, and who is yelling, Jason, with me tonight? I am Joe Butler, and Father, I would like to buy a balloon. Hi, I'm Hel Hathfury, uh, or Helena. Wow, I did that in the wrong order. Uh, <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> Welcome back. Hello, oh. I am Nate. Was I going next? Did I skip someone? No, you're good. You're good, Nate. No, you're next. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, uh, I'm right. Nate. I do comedy stand up. I uh, follow me on TikTok at Nate Does Comedy seventy nine or Nate Does Comedy. Just click the link in the description; it'll take you yeah, there. You'll see a link in the show notes. <laughs> and then it's me back again, Milk, and I am Jaden. And Heavy Rain is my trip to fame. That's who I am today with my All minimal right. sleep. And as you already have probably figured out, we are here to talk about Heavy Rain. We're doing a recovered episode. And looking back at Heavy Rain, which came out in 2010, developed by Quantic Dream, published by Sony. Yeah, I think that's all I need to say. <laughs> and <laughs> this, this originally came out on PS3, a PS3 exclusive, now is on Steam, PS4, PS5, I think, probably. It's on everything at this point, somehow, available to play. I played it on Steam, because that's the right way to play it for me. I played it on a Steam Deck, which is odd. I will give a very upfront hot take. If you have a way to play it, Steam is the wrong way to play it. Because holy <laughs> hell, these controls are awful. You didn't, you didn't have to shake your Steam Deck up and down, okay? So if, if I had to shake my Steam Deck up and down, then I wouldn't have probably had to wiggle my right stick up and down. And the input going, nah, you aren't doing that right now. And I'm like, but I am. I just want to wipe this door down. It's like, oh, oh, let's do it all again. Hey, the cops are almost here. Please free me. Heavy rain, stop. <laughs> Uh, it does not control that much better on PS4, PS5. So oh. like, don't yeah, don't I, feel too bad. <laughs> I think I think playing on a modern console is the wrong way to play this because I feel like the PS5 is way more sensitive. And there's like sometimes where I did the wiggle the controller a certain way, and it completely was like, no, we you did that way too fast. We didn't register it. So there. So either- Play it on original hardware, or better, hot take, don't play it. <laughs> Just listen to this <laughs> and walk it and have, have a better time. You know, a nice little day in the sun. Go touch grass. Don't play heavy rain. Go touch grass. <laughs> um, there was one part uh, when you're in the hotel with Madison and you're trying to make out with her, but, like, the controls wouldn't register, like, uh, <laughs> kissing her. So, like, he'd lean in awkwardly, and then I'd fail, and he'd, like, lean back. And then he'd lean it awkwardly, and then I'd fail, and I was like, please, like, let me pass with this. <laughs> mm. Just imagine sitting there being Madison and being like, what the fuck is this mating ritual? <laughs> <laughs> made, made me feel like an awkward teenager again, being like, all right, I gotta hold, like, three buttons and shift this way. Am I doing this right? Please, someone tell me. How do I unclip the bra? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, why there's so many buttons? The meme of a guy sweating trying to just like get through it. I was playing Heavy Rain on stream because I live stream on Twitch and I got to that sex scene and I have to say, like, it was my first time ever having like a sex scene on a game on Twitch. So I was like, should I should I make moves on her? Will people judge me if I try to have sex with this woman? It, it that gives me vibes of like uh when you're watching it like it sounds like when you're watching a dirty movie with your parents for the first time and you're like where do I look what do I do with my hands uh hey chat sorry let's just nobody make eye contact for the next two minutes absolutely and everyone knows that I can't hit the buttons correctly so I'm <laughs> failing at it too oh not in front of chat not like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about y'all either, because when you start the game off, there's an option to pick how familiar you are with the controller, and I pick, like, the okay and not the, like, completely familiar, especially because I play everything. The A button's not in the same spot, and then the the A button's also different on Xbox, and I, w- I don't remember, and I, I, don't use, I don't put both fingers on the back of the PlayStation controller, so I was like, I'm not going to pick that option. I'm just going to pick the medium option, because I will probably die at some point. You always, I always pick the easiest option in every game I play. Same here. I usually pick the hardest, and I did that this time again. And I'm I'm tired, y'all. That's all I'll say. <laughs> hey, you could have got the short version of the game. Just let everybody die. Mm, so. No, see, that was I had to, I had to do some healing, and I did that. We'll get there, but I I just finished the. I played this game once before when I was very young, and I had some lovely friends who were pretty. I don't want to use the word coercive. I think that sounds a little spicier, but they were like a little pushy because most of them have played it before, and. uh 
I had a character die who's like my favorite character, and I I just fin- literally before we start recording, just finished the scene, and I was able. I did have to redo it like twice because it's like one of the hardest button combos in the game. But I was able to do it, and I was able to get him through it. And it was on. I played on hard back then. I played on hard this time, so it was very healing to be like, "It's all right, Jaden. We're gonna go. We're gonna go on an adventure this time. You're not gonna go in the car and get squanched in the in the big crusty machine." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that that section of the game is so nerve wracking. I was like sweating from like every orifice orifice possible. <laughs> um, <laughs> when when I was younger and the first time I played, I was like doing great, right? And then out of nowhere, I killed all of them one by one, like oh. one by one in each next scene. And I remember <laughs> just sitting there and like weeping openly and. I, 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 oh God, it was so bad. I, I still remember it. That was such a letdown. No. Oh, I'll go ahead, Joe. Uh, oh, you go ahead. I think Jaden, when I played, was the only person who died the first time. So it was like, not again. It's going to be different. And I, I still fucked it up twice. And it's because on the hardest difficulty, it's literally, because I've done it like three times just now. Right bumper A, left bumper B, right trigger Y, left trigger. And you have to hold all those for like three seconds. And it's like, and you're good. And I was like, holy fuck. And it's, it's hard. Yeah, that's that's what hard looks like for this little preview. And that's usually not that bad. Like most of it was fine. I did the entire fight scene right before without a problem. But then it's like, oh, and there's so many. I don't know if you guys ever watched clips of when uh, just like the dr- heavy action scenes, but they fail every input. It's so funny. Like Jaden running through the market and hitting every single thing. If you look it up, it's one of the funniest things. He like has the chicken and he just like goes, ah, and it just like attacks him and then he drops it. And you're like, and it's like this man can't do anything in this in this mode. It's hilarious to watch. Just like, oh, hit by this car. Oh, hit by that car. Oh, he runs into those people. Oh, he tackles that dude. And you're just like, they're they're great. Clips. Slips on the fish. Oh, the fish. <laughs> oh, I love the fish. <laughs> Well, what a dork. I love <laughs> Jaden. I love him so much. He was I have never had anyone die in this game, and I played this game now three times and beat it. I always play it easy, but I had Jaden die for me this time because I <gasps> I I missed him. I thought the button pushing was done, so I was looking away or doing something else, and then the button pushing wasn't done and he missed something on the conveyor belt and died. Oh well, that's one. a crunchy that's a crunchy death too. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, Shelby doesn't get away, so that's all right. I think I think maybe we should back up, start from the beginning, because like well, this first week, plot is wild. Spoilers. There'll be spoilers for Heavy Rain, which is a st- heavy, heavy <laughs> pun intended, uh, story-driven game. So, ew. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the, the, I appreciated the, the pun. The it actually wasn't on purpose. It just happened. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm walking into a pun. Let's go. So the, the opening of this game makes me really, really mad. <laughs> a lot of things about this game make me really, really mad. Yeah. Is, is uh, it be, is it because it's being ghost written by by actual employees and then David Cage chooses to what he wants to put in and that's why half of this game doesn't make sense? I recently and I can't remember who and I think it was a you know a, some uh, public team but they talked about how they're like I think and they use the word thanks so I don't even think they knew that because I bet that's based off a real fact but they were like it feels like David Cage writes all the bad things and everyone else writes all the good things and I was like you know I could see that <laughs> and it sounds like you have reason, evidence to say that's true and that uh, oh that's hard my my evidence is decades later when Detroit Become Human came out a bunch of the quirky cute stuff that the robot man is comes from him improving it and david cage going that was goofy i don't want that in my game and then the other people in the team going okay we're ignoring him and we're leaving that in the game god yeah david cage is one of the main is the main developer writer what is his attribution in this writer. director oh. director writer okay. yeah david cage is the head of uh, these games that this studio produced for a few years and david cage to put it very bluntly and forwardly sucked a lot He's a bad person with bad opinions and bad takes. And I I don't want to get too political around here, but uh, every time you see a rough sex scene or a thing, you go, I don't think we needed this. Or in this game, my the thing I particularly noticed this time was like, wow, people of color are really a backdrop unless it's like, mm, you know, we need an antagonist. There we go. Person of color is like, oh, woof, woof. And that's that's David Cage just does a lot of those classic things that make you go, ew, yuck, what are we doing here? I'm not going to lie. I didn't know who he was. So when you said David Cage, I was thinking he was a Mortal Kombat character. (laughs) (laughs) I wish wish he lived in a realm of fantasy where I could beat him up senselessly eternally. That would make me a lot happier. (laughs) I am 
ninety percent sure he is the psycho- psychiatrist in this game. Oh, that would resonate. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, he's always in his own games, and if anyone remembers anything from Fahrenheit, what's the other, what's the game before this? Indigo, Prophe- oh, Indigo Prophecy. Indigo Prophecy or Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah he he's in the opening of Indigo Prophecy, and he's a redheaded bald man, and that's what the psychiatrist is. And I'm like, I'm ninety percent sure that's him, but I'm I don't care enough to look it up, so I'm just gonna say it is. I just looked it up. Uh, it's uh, the character is named Clarence Dupree, and he was modeled and voiced by Conrad Cecil. Okay, it's not him then. Okay, <laughs> to place him as a character, I'd put him as the creepy doctor who tries to murder and probably essay one of your characters. That's yeah. who I put him as. Like I, I hated that scene again. Thanks I for the that tip, scene Joe. Every yeah, thanks time. for the tip, Joe. Like, get the card walk out, and I was like, cool, doing yeah, that. Don't, don't do that scene. That that scene is not necessary. You I think can, it's, you? I didn't even know you could skip it. Yeah, don't like, I was like. This I'm is glad the somebody worst. played it because I want someone to talk about it because I skipped it too for time, man. Because I was like, I just can't do it this time. I need to walk out because yuck. Not not that psychiatrist, the the doctor. No, the doctor. The, with Madison, when you go to, you, at one point when she's solve, trying to solve the crime, you go to a, the doctor's place. There are this guys, and then you but to buy pills, and you can either have a drink, and if you have a drink, then you wake up downstairs about to be murdered, or you do what I did. You refuse the drink. You get up, go grab the car, and get the fuck out. You can leave. Yes, yeah, you can option? go in the bedroom, grab the card, and just leave before you come back, and you never get tied up in the basement. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I wish I knew that. Yeah, well, I'm, that glad, I'm glad I learned I that like this that time. Thing. I was like, nope, I'm out. Because I I refused the drink. Spoiler alert! I got the platinum for this game, so I had to do everything. <laughs> but uh, I refused the drink for the trophy, and then I was exploring the house, and I was like, oh cool, I don't have to do that scene. And <laughs> then he just knocked my ass out, and I was like, oh good, I get to do this scene. <laughs> yep. No, so my my game completely glitched, and apparently he knocked me out driving away. Well, because I got the card, <laughs> left the house, and while I was leaving the house, all I hear is him go, oh, I see you've stumbled into my trap, fair lady. And I'm like, wait, what's going on? And Madison's helmet's just floating there on the motorcycle. I'm like, please don't activate the scene where I'm already kidnapped. And thankfully it did not. So I was also able to get out of that scene scot-free. Yeah, I, yeah scot-free, I know. huh? Scott Shelby free. Good <laughs> <laughs> of those lines too. My Steam says 16 hours. I think that's high. I think I've probably played for like maybe seven. Maybe I left it on. But in like the five to seven hours I played, I think I it either crashed or I had to restart it about five or six times. So that's that's where I'm at with bugs as well. It's a fun little comment of like this game's quality of I had let's see, I sound just went out one time and it just wouldn't come back for all scenes, so I restarted it. Definitely crashes and then I because I was also I was basically um live tweeting to joe all night as i was playing this game so joe just woke up to a slew of mad person thoughts yeah I, like I, I woke up to a pepe sylvia meme of just like every <laughs> someone texting me milk texting me every like hour being like what is happening where am i and I, I definitely made note of all the times i was like oh well that broke again that's just gonna boot it back up i didn't have uh, any issues at all with it uh, like loading or crashing so apparently it's original hardware, don't play it, or Steam Deck. That's the three orders of best ways to experience this game in 2023. The only the issue with the Steam Deck was more of just having to shake my Steam Deck. Like having to like when I had to do the when you move the controllers, like you get to move the entire Steam Deck, and I'm like, I don't feel comfortable moving my Steam Deck like this. But it works. My my partner like was on the couch for most of the time I played this game. And every time I had to do something that involved shaking the controller, she would just stare at me. <laughs> like, please <laughs> stop playing this game. <laughs> I was like, I can't. Oh, and I, oh. I wanted to make this joke earlier, but I, I forgot. Uh, so, I, so I, as I said before, I played this game three times. I've done this game two times for the show. And the only reason why this game's been on the show twice, well, if, if the joke should be, if I had two nickels, I have two. Because I did it for Helena both times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're the reason why I played this game twice. Yes. <sighs> I, I like that power. <laughs> <laughs> I do like this game. It like besides a lot of like the clunky stuff. I mean, it was still I beat this game in two days and it was still fun for me. Like it was a fun like I don't think I need to play it a fourth time ever in my life. But I mean, it was I had a decent time. Like I didn't I'm easy. I didn't have the issues you guys were having. I mean, the story is bleh, like I have my issues with it. But like I was just I didn't mind the QT events. I actually did all the all the stuff with. Ethan, which I never do, I cut off the finger, I drank the vial, I shot the guy. I never do that. I usually skip a couple and you get the pass for the other way through Madison. 
Oh, I didn't know that. I'm glad because I, I did the inverse. The first time I played it, I did everything. I, except I think take the poison, maybe not kill the guy. But then I don't remember getting the rest for Madison. So Because I, I think Madison, maybe Madison died. I might have lost her. But yeah, well, so I, I've, I've done the inverse of like, oh, no, taking a finger. No, nah, I want my finger. I forgot. I did the first, the last, the third and the fourth one. I was like, oh, it's fine. And then the fifth one, I was like, oh, I have to poison myself. And I was like, oh, I have two of five. I don't know if I'm finding my kid as this dad. Oh, well, rip. At least I got my finger. Well, it, with Madison, if you if you go to when you go to the apartment with her in the final part, you can get in the room, find it. You just have to have her not die. And then she can either call Jaden or Ethan and tell them the other one where, where it is. And Ethan was already new. So I just called Jaden and told Jaden, which I never had Jaden show up before. For that. Oh, I'm going to have Jaden show up. I love Jaden. I don't like Jaden. What? <laughs> Nam and Jaden. Not again. Nam and Jaden. Nam and Jaden. He, he's just so dorky. I forget. There was one line with him in the car and his horrible coworker, And there was like a, it was like a cocky or like a, a sarcastic answer. And the smi- the side smile he gives looking back out the pastor window, but it's just at the camera. I was like, Jaden, I love you so much. I just want a game that's about Jaden and Madison. Madison is such an interesting character. And I I can't get over how little she's in this game. Like, I have, I have sleeping problems. Uh, oh, hey, thanks, Mystery Sam. We're never going to talk about who Sam is, but he got me the info. He hooked me up. Also, I take photos for a furniture catalog, but that's just an offhand comment. Hey, you want to fuck? Because that's why I'm here. Because David Cape <laughs> wrote this. And I'm just like, oh, Madison, you're really cool. And I want to know more. And I'm not going to get to. God damn it. And then I'm secretly a journalist as well. She does everything. <laughs> she's a Renaissance woman. Oh. Uh there is also a DLC called The Taxidermist, which focuses on Madison two years before heavy rain occurs. So oh, if you so want more happy. Madison. I did not know that. But that- that's that's only on the PS3 version. They did oh. not bring that to mm. current gen or ports, which is just like, why? Why? I mean, you probably can't even buy it anymore. I'm assuming that store or the PS3 store is still up. PS3 store is still up, but you have to add like a PSN card online and then use it on the PS3 itself. Uh, me like here, my my interest went out the window. It was there for a second. I was like, oh, but then I'm yeah. like, nope, I'm good. Me in like how well the they, PS3 Heavy Rain works on modern emulators, so I can just play that that DLC. They had planned on making more, but I they just didn't after the taxidermist. Like I guess there were supposed to be some more side stories, but then they just didn't. I, I know why. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the reason being is PlayStation came up and went, hey, were you guys planning a bunch of DLC for this game? And David Cage was like, yeah. And then uh, what is it? Uh, PlayStation went, no, we need you to convert the game to PlayStation Move controls. Oh, oh I mm-hmm. forgot this game had move controls. Yes, this game has move controls. Sony legitimately told them to stop making DLC and just start working on the move control system that's why there's only one dlc because we were supposed to get more because uh <sighs> get guess what question never gets answered the whole game and i hope someone has an answer for it why ethan blackout uh, why ethan blacks out oh, oh but I also who know. that guy is at the end of the game at madison's book signing yes that was i don't know what you're talking DLC. about Madison's book signing. I do not there's and, yeah one of the endings is madison signing a book and there's a guy who's like I read your whole, I like, I loved this story, Madison. Maybe next time you can, like, you know, have a more worthy opponent or some weird thing like that. And then she looks up and there's nobody there. And nobody comments on a guy just, like, walking away in this busy bookstore. <laughs> like, that's uh, just fucking weird. I, I don't like stuff like that. <laughs> I don't, I like Madison in this game. I'm, I'm with Helena. She's probably my favorite character in this. I just <laughs> didn't. There's just I didn't really think about, but yeah, she doesn't really have that much. You're most I mean, this game is mostly focused on Ethan, which makes sense. And I'm I'm okay with Ethan stuff too. I'm I'm okay with all the father stuff. Like I think that's decently done. You know, like it, it's fine. I, I really I just didn't care for the Jaden stuff with him being a you know, just like all the stuff with him with the like it, it's cool, but I just didn't care for him. I also really, really hate that Boston cop guy. Really Oh yeah, him. the Boston cop guy oh. is horrible. Yeah. I'm terrible. He's the worst. I mean, I at least I at least for him, it's like, oh, I think he's written to be you, you're not supposed to like him. I feel like Detroit for the little bit I've played does that better of with the uh, robot eight police guy and the old girls of police. It's like, oh, he's unlikable, but he has a soft side. And there's a lot more there. And I think this they weren't doing that. They're like, ah, this dude's a dick and he's a dirty cop kind of what a jerk. And you're like, all right, I'm the cool cop. I'm the one I was likable and rad and dorky. And oh, I just love Jane. <laughs> 
Well, because you can also you can say that the cop is the killer. I did that my first playthrough, and he's not. So. Oh my god! And then I... at the end of Jaden's story, he gets hauled off. <laughs> oh, Jaden's the. I thought you meant that the dirty cop was the no. Killer. You can you can fr- you can say it's a dirty cop, but then they say you're an idiot and they haul you off. <laughs> Well, Something that like fair. that, from what I remember. It's been a long time. This is the first time I played this game back in probably 2011. So you guys, you guys said there's a lot of endings for this. I'm really excited to finish it because I would spoiler. I didn't finish it. I got right to the scene where I was talking about where I healed my inner child and went, "Yay, Jane's alive!" And then that's where I stopped. But I'm definitely gonna finish it to see mostly see the Jane scenes and I think more of a of I almost said your name, Helena. More Madison scenes. <laughs> And then, uh, but then I'm going to look at these other endings because you guys are talking about stuff. I'm like, that's buck wild. And I love it, but I, I'm going to finish this and I probably maybe play the DLC and I probably won't touch this ever again. (laughs) Can I talk about one of the endings right now that is buck wild? Okay. So there is an ending that where both the kids die. So Jason and Sean die and Ethan and Madison hook up and Ethan are they're at, they're at Sean's grave, you know, and Ethan is like, oh, I couldn't save him. And Madison is just like, I want you to give me a child. And I was like, dog, this is not the time nor the place. <laughs> you know, Ethan is going through something. And then Madison is like, you know, we can start a new life together. We can have a new child, etc. And then she like walks towards the car and Ethan just shoots himself. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, man. <laughs> like, in, I, oh, go ahead, please, please. In every ending that Sean dies... Ethan shoots himself. I'm looking at all the endings right now. Oh, that that feels lazy, honestly. <laughs> I feel like, well, he's got he's got to do it. It doesn't matter. We're gonna get there some way if that keeps. Going. Well, they're they're very different ways. I mean, what about one where he poisons himself, but then he doesn't get there in time? Does he still shoot himself? Because I find that impressive, honestly. <laughs> it's not real poison. So yeah, it's not. It's what? Not real oh no! Now I'm gonna take yeah, it's the a poison. trick to Go see ahead. if you love your son enough to you know drink the vial of liquid that you don't know what it is. Yeah, but then Scott still shows up to like shoot you. So it's like... wait, he still kills you or still tries to kill you? Yeah. So but like yeah. you there and you say Sean. The whole purpose of what he's doing. His whole yeah. purpose is to develop Whoa, five trials. Like, I'm upset here. It's like cause... Shelby sucks. His hot take and his and his ideas and theories because are funk. <laughs> what I did at this time, I did all five trials. Shelby shows up. He's throwing a fit. But then Jaden got his attention and takes him away. And then he does. So he never tried to kill Ethan. I'm like, okay, that makes sense because he passed the test. He did the five trials. He passed the test. He's going to go save his son. Why would you shoot somebody who finally did what you wanted? Like, that defeats the purpose of the villain, too. Like, that's just being like, I mean, I get it. If you only do three of the four or, you know, three of the five, or you did four of the five, or you only did one, like, you get the thing. But, you know, if that makes sense because you failed the test, you don't have the right to be here. But if you passed all five tests, like, hey, congratulations, you got an A+. Plus. Goodbye. Like, what the? F- it makes no sense. Okay, that's I'm irritated, but. I think that's a really nice snapshot of if you look at any aspect of this game, especially the writing close enough, that's where you end up of like, what is happening? Like, I didn't do it, but I was curious. Uh, the first time uh, Madison and e- fucking Ethan, Sean, and Jason are all one. Ethan, right? Ethan's the guy. Sean's okay. the son. Madison is with Ethan in his uh, apartment, and there's an option to walk in the bathroom. I didn't, and I definitely was like, what? happens i was like do they have sex if i make her go in there one because that'd be gross two i wouldn't be surprised three why and i because there is they have they have an inter they have an intimate scene during this like before they find his son right yeah yeah but oh. i don't i don't think that that happens okay. i didn't walk up to the bathroom door but I did. I did write down in my notes uh, after you first meet Madison and like you have to take a shower as her. I wrote, uh, "I'm instituting a new rule. Anytime you show a boob, you have to have a scene with a penis just to balance things out." Hell I mean, yeah, brother! <laughs> no, at least the thing they do have with that is you. There's options to make her pee, and I was like, "Well, at least I can make Ethan pee every time he goes back to his apartment or his uh, his hotel room." No, you know what makes me real mad is you have the opening of the game where you uh you you wash Ethan's ass and then he puts on a different pair of underwear. Oh, yeah. But when Madison goes and showers, she puts on the same underwear and the same shirt. But I guess the excuse is that it's a dream, so it's not that bad. I would see that's the funny thing. You can use the same logic of I don't really like that we're having this character who's the you know first femme protagonist introduced. 
is experiencing an assault scene, and that's just, oh, it's a dream. Why did we do it? I don't know. It was a fun little nightmare in the practice. And I'm like, I don't like this either. Well, at least it was a dream, but that's worse. We did This didn't need to happen, David Cage. Okay, so, so as someone with narcolepsy, that scene resonated with me so much because I have, like, the type of narcolepsy where you get, like, shadow people and, like, full oh. body paralysis. So people breaking into my, your apartment, like, Literally just the other night, I woke up and I saw a shadow person, but I thought it was a real person. If you know anything about shadow people, there's this one with a big hat. He's called the the hat, the man. hat man. Yeah. And I saw him and thought someone had broken into my apartment. I was screaming bloody murder, like literally screaming out loud until I figured out how to turn on my lamp again. And I was like, oh, there's nobody in here. I don't blame you. So, uh, you know, I don't I don't know Madison's uh, diagnosis list, but. I bet she has narcolepsy or other some other parasomnia on there. Okay. Yeah. It's on it, yeah. She just, just says made it made more sense and I'm more okay with it now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's also <laughs> so I didn't think about that. Yeah. I was thinking of guy wants to put woman half naked in a situation where she's getting attacked. Like Well, I'm that's like, still it's yeah. an exploitative scene. I mean, they didn't need to completely take away her agency and make her naked. They could have handled that very differently. Yeah, for dream writing's sake. See, I think that's the beauty of this is like and with David Cage, often it's like you can go, well, if it wasn't David Cage, I could maybe see it. But it's David Cage, so I'm willing to bet it's <laughs> not good writing, and he's doing it to be weird and gross. Yay! <laughs> I uh, really know nothing about David Cage, and I feel like I'm learning so much from oh, this call. <laughs> oh, I have <laughs> a, he's pop off, Joe. I don't know him all by heart, but there's a lot of rough I, stuff. I know him all by heart because I hate this man with the fiery passion that is my soul. Uh, <laughs> David Cage is a known freak because whenever he went up to Elliot Page to ask him to be in Detroit or not Detroit beyond, beyond yeah. yeah beyond two souls, he brought a photo album of her as a child all the way up until the current age that he was, and then was like, "Hey, be in my game," and they were like, "Okay," That's and then weird, and then he continued to model uh, when. Before he transitioned, model uh, his full naked body into the game that you had to cheat to get access to that. And currently, I don't even think, yeah, currently, I don't even think Quantic Dreams exist because he got sued really heavily because they found out that he was photoshopping women's faces that worked for him onto bikini models and then also wrote a bunch of F slurs for gay people. And the quote was him crying, going, Why do the gay people hate me so much? I just want to make my fancy games. They're and, still around. Uh, I mean, the company's still around. Yeah, oh, yeah, I was going to say, Quantic Dream exists because they're making a Star Wars game. Yeah, That, that got canceled. Oh, thank God. <laughs> but I, I did also want to see really bad Star Wars adventure game. <laughs> Play his first original bad game, something or other. The Nomad Soul? That's yeah, Nomad Soul. That game's bad. Oh, I thought you were talking about Indigo Prophecy, and I was like, I have, and that game like really falls off halfway through. <laughs> I'm glad because I tried to play at some point, and I I fell off before halfway, and I was like, God, I've heard a lot of cool things, but no, it's a little too old. No, so, there's a. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, I just looked it up. The Quantic Dreams still exists. It was acquired by a company called NetEase in August of 2022. Okay, cool. NetEase is a really big company. But yeah, hostile. If you go to David Cage Wiki's like hostile workplace reports, philosophy, it's it's a it's a whole rough. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't be shocked if he's not with them. I was trying to find that, but yeah. So uh, I uh, so I just looked at um, David Cage's uh, Wikipedia page, and there's a little section for personal life, and it's literally one short sentence. Cage is an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing wrong with that part, but that doesn't mean you like. Is that it? Either. Is that it? <laughs> nothing else? <laughs> that's yeah. That's that's all that man wants you to know. That's all he needs you to know. Uh, in June 2023, Quantum Dream revealed the brand name Spotlight by Quantum Dream, under which they continue publishing third-party games made outside the studio. Yeah, so they exist to some extent, but mm. but du doubling back to a comment I made earlier. And speaking of Indigo Prophecy, the reason why Ethan has blackouts is because when he got full body slammed by a car he formed a psychic connection with shelby and that's why when he blacks out he makes little origami figurines but whenever they talked about it someone was like david cage that sure sounds supernatural didn't you do not want this game to be supernatural like indigo prophecy 
And he goes, oh, yeah, so take that out. But then they went, hey, you forgot to take out the part where he makes origami figurines and blacks out. What do you want to do about that? And he went, oh, no. And that's why those scenes are still in the game. <laughs> that upsets me because those scenes go nowhere. And that bothered me because, it, like, you never get an answer to why he's blacking out and making origami figures. Like, you just, you know, it's just there to make you think that he's the killer and then nothing. And I don't like that. Yes, it adds drama. The other part about that that I don't like is when you play Scott every once in a while, he has an internal monologue about, like, I wonder who the origami killer is. I'm like, motherfucker, that's you, dude. Like, so I was why are you having this time. these internal I, thoughts? <laughs> I was really looking for any lines. I do think maybe I, I want to double check, but I think they're very intentional with what they have him say. And I think, like, I think pretty clearly he's like, he's like, oh, you know, like, what did he say? Like, when you look at um the clock guy who dies, he doesn't go like, oh, the killer just did this in his head. He goes, ah, oh, it's a shame. Went too early. And it's like, if I remember correctly, I think it reveals, oh, yeah, he killed him, but he yeah. doesn't show it. Yeah. So I feel, I think maybe they actually do a pretty good job. I might be wrong, but I was looking really hard to see if he's ever like, I wonder who did this murder. And I'm like, I don't think he does it. So, I, I mean, mean I, I feel like, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm probably wrong. Cause like when I was replaying it, you know, I was like, why is he visiting these people? Like, and then it's like, oh, to get the evidence back. That makes sense. The clock guy or the typewriter guy, like, I don't understand that kill because, like, you're with him all the time. And then you walk into the back room and it cuts like there's no the scene they show where he kills him shows him like looking around and then knocking him over the head and then jumping back. But when you're with him, he walks and it's just him going, whoa, he's dead now. So that that kills a little weird. Yeah, no, they they definitely don't do that part. I think as well with it. Yeah. What they're they, it's like they do it well until they can, and then they're like, ah, eh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's just it happened, and you didn't see it, and you're like, Whoa. because you you shouldn't have control of him during that time because like it isn't like the camera like you lose control for a moment and then he he walks mm-hmm. and then the guy dies. Like it makes you think like you're controlling him. It 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 doesn't vibe right. I also don't like you play. I I have an issue with game where you are the villain. I don't like that in most cases. Like, there's a certain game where you might have uh, killed your wife, and I do not like that when you find that out, and I'm replaying that game. But that's a different game. But, like, it bothered me in this game knowing who Scott Shelby is and how you are, like, you are the killer, and I just, I don't like that. Like, when you think he's trying to solve the case, like, I know, like, no, he's just trying to clean up his mess. He's just trying to get rid of all the evidence so nobody can, you know, figure out he did it. I do, I do think it's hilarious when Lauren brings him the envelope and he's like, huh, it was typed with an old typewriter while he's sitting next to a typewriter oh, yeah. at his desk. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I think there's little nuggets that are meant to be like, hey, if you're really paying attention, you'll connect these dots. And I'm like, I don't think you put these dots as close together as you think you do. But, but okay. that's see, I had the same thought. I said, oh, that's kind of clever writing. But that's not even the typewriter he uses. He has another typewriter oh, in, the, right. in his secret room. Yeah. And mm. I'm like. And then also, I was like, why would this typewriter guy not remember Scott having the same typewriter? You know, like he does seem to be losing his memory a bit. I feel like they're really kind of suggesting like how old he is. Like, oh, oh, Scott. Oh, oh, Scott. Yeah, that's right. You're like, oh, bud. Oh, but I mean, you do. Get, right, I can fair. say this for a fact. You do have memory loss as you age. It's not dementia. It's just regular. <laughs> and then you dementia something different. But yeah, no, the, the other part about the typewriters. Yeah, that's that's very a uh, point of like, oh, they're, they're kind of they're dots. They're around. You could connect them. But it's a lot easier after you've beaten the game to go. Oh, oh. <laughs> I I think the other one, too, is that I think, he knows Sean Mars got kidnapped before they say it on the news. I think that's supposed to be your little nugget as well. That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. But I do. I do also not to keep this hate train rolling. But I do also. I love that it. He's like, like just the whole Ethan thing where he's like, I think I'm the origami killer. If you just talk to the police, my dude, like <laughs> just had them like watch you and they would follow you know what i mean like and they could just follow you to make sure you're not the origami killer like half the game would be solved (laughs) his blackouts and his response to them are pretty questionable especially before his kid goes missing afterwards his justification of madison is like if i go they're gonna lock me up i have to save sean first because no one else will and i'm like yeah okay sure whatever that's a that's a theory a game theory but his other but before it's like 
you I, you're blacking out my man you probably should be like hey former wife of mine i'm having some medical issues and i love my child so i'm gonna let you watch until i stop blacking out randomly because i don't want our other child to die because it's clearly very important to me <laughs> as a guy who's been through custody issues that could also be a custody problem depending on how things are in their agreement where if he gave up time that he's supposed to have it can also hurt him in court if she was taken back to court so that <laughs> That could be a part of it. I don't think that was what they were thinking of when they wrote this, because I don't think the guy was thinking that way, but yeah. that is how that worked. He was too yeah. busy assembling a scrapbook of Elliot Page while this game was being made to have good writing thoughts like that. I, I bet you money. Mm. No, what what I think is interesting, I think, yeah, what I agree with Mike said, I think the whole idea is if he goes and says he's having blackouts, he won't. Like They'll be like, oh, well, you're not fully fit to have a, chi- to have a child, and he wouldn't even get custody, period. Yes, and there's depending on what state this is. I don't know Philadelphia's how because they're in, they're in Boston, aren't they? Or that's not Philadelphia. They're 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 in Boston because it's they like, say origami. Yeah, it's it's like heavily implied it's around that area. Okay, I don't think I mean, they actually say this I, is Boston. I think I double checked and a writer later confirmed that it was. They just never officially said it during the whole time, but they were like, yeah, all of us knew it was in there. You know. Okay. But, yeah. and, so yeah, that I mean I don't know how that stated, but yeah, that was something I was thinking of. It, is like it it does you know for custody things it, that all that can play effect depending on how the the people are in the agreement and what they're because if you're trying to take away somebody's kid, you can <laughs> it's not nice. And especially depending on the state, the father usually has less rights than the mother, which so that I don't know. I mean, except in Texas, I know that Texas father has more rights. <sighs> Wouldn't who would have got thought that? But it's you know that that could play a part in it. Helena, what did you think of the whole like plaintiff Scott Shelby? If you had <laughs> pause. Sigh. I love it. I you know you know I love this game, but I do. The rules for Scott Shelby were inconsistent. And I think the idea that he became a serial killer of young boys after witnessing his brother die is a crazy way to react to that. There I don't think that makes logical sense. And as someone who has a psych degree, I don't think it makes psychological sense either. I don't think that those things would follow each other. Why would he punish the child for the father? Like, why, why would why would he why would he kill the the kids? He knows how that feels. He and he watches them die. He watches them die. Are you kidding me? No, no, it's no. Oh, I just I hate Scott. Like at so many levels that I just literally can imagine the child drowns and he puts the phone away and he goes, well, better get to cleaning up this mess. <laughs> like the way he delivers <laughs> lines, I'm just like, Scott, Shelby, literally. what are we doing? That was such a good Scott Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just how he talks. He's like, oh, geez, what are we going on today about? Hmm. I, I What's like going on him. with this baby? <laughs> when I first played baby this crime. game, Not I good. really like Scott Shelby. Like, that's the thing is, I was like, okay, this guy's cool. Like, this is fun. Like, I... It's when I found out who he is, I remember my jaw dropped. I'm like, no, I like this guy. Uh, but I think that's that's very much the intent, at least. It's like it the first is, time I played but... it, I like Shelby, but never, but he ain't playing again. And even then, it's just like, God, you're really annoying. Jaden's suave and dorky. Well, Jaden doesn't have old. enough scenes. He really just has a couple. He he has the one, the beginning one where you're at the crime site. You have, I think you have one in the bathroom where he's hallucinating again. I do like the VR ball. Like, man, I would be that guy putting on the glasses, sitting in the waiting room, just bouncing a ball back and forth. Yeah. And people looking at me like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, that'd be me. I think like, he has about, like, so far, as far as I've like, seven scenes. Yeah, the precinct. He has one other scene. That's getting oh, mad, Jack. The, the chase. The stupid religious guy. I That scene is just bothers me. That's because, like, the scene. cop is such a bad cop. He's like, oh, let's beat this guy up. Like, you're in his apartment. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's. That apartment is like very creepily designed too. Like I, I really like the atmosphere in that place. I did replay that scene three times this time because one, I and this was a small nitpick. I don't think at any point they ever really emphasized like careful about pressing that button. You can't take it back. And so every time, every time up to this is like, hey, if you see a button, press it to like do prevent a thing. So the first time I did, I instantly shot him, and I was like, wait, I didn't. I also don't think it tell. It's not clear. Like, oh, you're about to shoot this man. I was like, oh fuck, I didn't mean to shoot him. And then I did it again, and I waited until the last second of, like, because tr- I didn't want to wait too long and miss the button prompt, and I was confused, and I was like, oh, it is cross, and I actually shot him. Well, oh, do it again, because, like, when I first play, when I play this game back in the day, and, like, how you play games, it's like, oh, I have to play it very, I have to be blind, I have to, like, let the first experience be the true one, but I was like, that's just not who I am anymore. I'm like, no, I'm here for the, the good times, and I'm not going to shoot cross man, because, whoops, 
I don't know. That button shouldn't be pressed. I, I really, it's, it's what's so hard is I really like parts of this game. And then there's other parts that burn. They burn me to my core and I have to like wrestle back and forth. <laughs> I think that's uh, just, there's a lot of baggage too in this game that mm-hmm. was stuff that doesn't need to be there. I think that's part. And it doesn't help that the, we know more about the director now than we did back then. So that doesn't, I don't think, help things either. There's also a lot of goofy stuff that's made this written like a movie. Um, one thing that I think is funny, because we're funny enough, we're, we're focusing on each character each, which I think is great. But uh, Jaden, the Jaden's cop partner, every person that he wants to go after, I don't actually think he has a solid reasoning as no. to why he, he mm-hmm. thinks that the origami killer. He's just like, let's go arrest random people I've arrested over the past like five years and just, just ask them cop. questions. Yeah. I, and then I, I well, took it as they were basing it a little bit off, off of his like, uh, his uh makeup that he made. So I thought they were using that, but then also going back to like, but then they were going, and then he was leaning way towards like, well, here in the makeup, there's like these two or three guys are like, well, we're going to go arrest them. And you're like, well, hold on. Okay. So I think there's like a weird, like a bolt sort of thing where it's like, they're listening to him, but they're not. And he's like, I'm going to, it's definitely him. I'm going to get him to confess. You're like, oh, wolf, please stop but, punching that poor man. <laughs> but there's also the really goofy thing of Jaden where it's like, hey, we gave him VR glasses. It's like, okay, well, how do we make this bad? And it's like, I know. In order to keep yourself from hallucinating with the VR glasses, you do cocaine about it. I was going to look that up. I mean, no, that's fair. I, I just love the VR glasses. I said I'd be that guy that, like, when we get there, that technology, I'd be all in. So, Did yeah, you... But, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Joe. I, I was going to say, uh, but, like, we do have it now. So just imagine now just uh, Norman Jaden putting on a big a meta quest and being like, time for me to investigate. <laughs> Did you know that if you just leave Jaden too long in that Ari, he'll die? Because I like, learned that. In uh, any one scene or total throughout the game? I think it's just one scene. <laughs> so, like, if you spend too long, like, looking for clues, he just dies. That's amazing. How, I love it. How does the death happen? Like, what, what does he do? So, like, for instance, when you're, like, at the very last scene where you're in Ari and you're, like, investigating the clues and trying to figure out, like, where the killer is, he just, like, kind of convulses and then just dies in his chair. I don't think it can happen at the very first crime scene because you're not, like, in that uh, yeah, you're not uh, environment, yeah. you know, that you choose. But, yeah, every, every other time you're in it, if you just l- linger too long or don't figure it out, he'll just convulse and die. It's I don't the, like that. It's the it's it's the final puzzle. Everyone kind of has a final puzzle. Madison's is escaping the big blowing up building, and then you have uh, you trying to figure out what's where. Because technically, I I didn't do one puzzle. I didn't shoot the guy, so you have to figure out where uh, Sean is. But Jaden's is figuring out who the killer is. And but yeah, if you stay on Ari too long, I guess it overloads his brain. He dies from an aneurysm. Well, that makes sense because doesn't he get like a nosebleed as time mm-hmm. goes on? Yeah. 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 But, but I thought that was because of the the tryptocaine he was doing. Well, that's the thing. If you do, I never have taken the tryptocaine, which I did, not once, and he still gets the nosebleeds. And I think it's still implied mm-hmm. he's doing it on the side a little bit. But like, I don't know. I think it's kind of it's an. Int- I'm wondering if you take tryptocaine if it makes other parts easier because he's like has the you know the uh, effects of the drugs helping, but it's not enough. So uh, it you cuts get- the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Honestly, you get the worst ending if you do tryptocaine. At once, all all the times. Don't oh, do tryptocaine, oh, not even God. Don't do tryptocaine. Um, <laughs> if you do tryptocaine in the Mad Dog fight, like when it gives you the option, it ends that fight early, so you don't yeah. have you're not like in doing the bulldozer section of it. Yeah, that's where my Jaden died the first time, and oh. that's what I beat. I made it so he was able to take the tryptocaine. So. Um, I'll find out when I get there. I the tried, end. but I couldn't hit the button. I didn't hit the right button, and he, so he dropped it, and then he got beat up, and then we had to fight. <laughs> uh, there is also an ending where Jaden dies, and the police captain gives Blake the VR glasses. So Blake puts them on, you know? And then uh, Jaden, like, exists in the VR world, and he, like, comes up behind Blake, and Blake's like, <laughs> and then it just ends. That's <laughs> what the... <laughs> yeah. oh. So... Uh, Jaden doesn't have a good ending at all throughout this whole, throughout oh, this whole game. Don't tell uh, me that. Don't his, tell four, me yeah, that. His, four, his four endings, either it's him overdosing on tryptocaine, so if you take it every chance you get, his his ending scene where he's in the bathroom, there'll be a bunch of bottles on the floor and he'll be overdosed in the toilet. And then if you don't do tryptocaine, you still see that he sees hallucinations because the weird butler that he sees was because he's oh. the butler. The butler says something like, don't overindulge. And you think he's talking about the medicine, but he's actually talking about the glasses. Oh, okay. and, 
Yeah, and oh. then mm-hmm. yeah, and then the the only way to get the his good ending where nothing bad happens to him is you have to blame Blake. And when you blame Blake and get it wrong, he feels sad about not being able to solve the case, so he quits the FBI. And that's not terrible. So he quit his yeah. job. Go get a different job. <laughs> but it's it's uh, it's it's not satisfying for him. Like I don't know. That's oh, Jaden. No. No, I almost no. I almost had Jaden have enough clues to figure it out, but I didn't during one the fight scene when you're at the club. I didn't grab the jacket and get the receipts or get whatever you need from the jacket in order to put together. So I was never able to figure out the crime for Jaden. So um, he never speaking, made it. Speaking oh, so speaking of the club, there is that scene where Madison goes up to get answers, and there is an option where the guard comes in, like while uh, I think his name is Paco. It's Paco. He's, yeah, he's tied up in the chair. And then the guard comes and he's like, knocks on the door. He's like, boss, you okay? And Madison fakes an orgasm. And Paco the whole time is like mouth wide open. And as gross as that is, I legitimately thought that scene was like very tense, you know, because like it's just intense. And then the guard is like, nice job, boss. And he like walks away. <laughs> <you know? laughs> like, I mean, to be fair, that feels like a, a, a very like movie man, dumbass asshole thing like it was oh, for sure it was so face, fucking funny it was yeah, taco's face during it is just like so good he's like <clears throat> you know like that could happen you know <laughs> he's like in <laughs> awe of it. Uh, it i i like that part of madison i don't care for like the whole like when you have a gun pointed at her and the whole strip tease i'm glad that you don't have to do a lot of it you can just take off one article of clothing then hit the fucker with a lamp i don't so, even think you can, you don't even have to take an article of clothing off you can like like do the butt dance and then she turns around and then you can grab the lamp and like smash okay. him in the head. I, think I took yeah. off like my shirt or something. I was trying to do the least amount of stuff. And then as soon as I, I'm like, okay, lap time in the face. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I turned, I was too down a little bit excited. I'm about to do that scene. I haven't, but man, now I'm not looking forward to it as much. Uh, it, you can skip it. I mean, you don't have to do much of it. it I mean, yeah. it's fine. I just don't like, I don't know. I have issues with certain things in games and the, uh, that stuff that bothered me a bit. I was, I was looking up uh trip, trip to Kane because I was just double checking. I was like, that's not real. It's not. But reading about it and learning, it's a combination of it seems rem- quote reminiscent of tryptamine or tryptophan, precursor derivative of serotonin, suggesting a serotonin based effect, and then also cocaine or novocaine for the second part, which seems to be more about again the serotonin. So whatever he's snuffing seems to just be straight serotonin, which somehow copes with AR withdrawals. Mm. And I think that's beautiful. So <laughs> You know what's interesting about that now that you say it is um, serotonin syndrome is like a real thing that can happen when you have too much serotonin. And let me let me look up the symptoms of that. I've actually had that twice and it's not great. All right. So when you have serotonin syndrome, your symptoms, your very stiff muscles, tremors, trouble talking or swallowing, changes in your behavior or thinking, confusion or edginess, not being able to talk or move, fever, changes in your heart rate, high blood pressure, breathing faster than normal, sweating more than usual, and you can actually die from it. So all the symptoms that Jaden has when he doesn't take it. Euphoric effects due to it's TRI, yeah. It's 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 interesting. I I just I don't know. Everything about Jaden and what's going on, I really like and I think it's interesting. Like the Ari is just neat and it's like it's fun concepts altogether. And I think that's why I really like it. Like I want to go do Detroit at some point. Like I've played about half it, I think, and it's just because the besides all the things I don't like about it, the things that I do like about it, I think are really neat. And so I'm hoping to do that at some point. Just the like future stuff they do is kind of neat to be like, whoa, this AR is really cool, even if it is a little dorky. I I also am really mad if Jaden is no like I'm sure Jaden knows that the AR is what's hurting him because the drug is meant to help him and he's taking it for that. And so the only time I'm really mad is when he's sitting there at the piano and I'm like, Jaden, if you're just thinking about this, get the fuck out of the AR, bud. What are you doing? <laughs> you're just like mm, piano time. And I'm like, no. The one thing I was thinking about with that butler, he really reminded me of the character from The Shining, of the bartender in The Shining that is kind of one of the clues movie, when Jack right? losing it. Yes, yeah, I think it's meant meant to be that because that was okay. Because that's how I, I it's just the, the the way he talked, the way he looked, it really reminded me of that scene. Yeah, yeah. I think you're supposed to get that from that. Okay, that's cool. So I, I I did what the game expected. Yeah, it's it's a, they <laughs> use allusion to other media. Neat. I think that's a really good example. Where it's like, yeah, I was definitely giving those vibes of the setting, the piano, the way they're talking, him bringing him alcohol. It's like, yeah, he's a bartender, you know, blah blah blah. Yeah, and then also the fact that like he gives him. 
advice. So I'm guessing it's like the robot part of the Ari device. I, it's it's weird. I love it, but it's like not. It's it's very David Casey. Like we're gonna introduce this. We're gonna explore a little bit, but not enough. Here and be going. How does this thing work? Whatever. We don't got time. We gotta solve the origami killer. One that we we haven't touched on yet that I want to talk about are the Ethan trials. I. I appreciate them more this time than I ever have in any of my previous playthroughs. Like, I actually did them all, as I said earlier, which I've never done. I mean, I have failed on the power plant one when you have to go through all that glass. And, God, that's, that hits me like, ugh. Can't even imagine doing that. That trial on the hardest difficulty is, leg- like, the the pylon part is legitimately hard. Like, you have to curb your hand like the bullet in Wanted to make it through. <laughs> That's a deep cut reference. I, I also, that trial in particular, I think, bugs me because they very much are like, hey, we should identify a clear route. And it, from what I was trying, I couldn't find any way to overlook it really clearly. And it's like, can I do this while I'm up here? And it's like, nah, just kind of like, you know, look with, from where you can. I'm like, why don't you give me a button? Like, because there's other parts where it's like, hey, look out the window where it's raining. Oh, uh, look at that rain. And it's like, can I use that button right now, please, to get a nice view and go, okay, I'm going to go this way. And it's like, no, just, just from where you're at. Just take a peek. And I'm like, okay. But I I like, I don't know, the the trial I also frustrates me because I think I like most of the other ones. But the fourth trial is weird because knowing what I knew and also encountering that guy, I was like, I don't want to kill him. But I also hate this guy, and I wish there was any other option besides smack him with gun, probably walk away and never enter the apartment, or die, or kill him. And I'm like, hey, can I call a cop? Can I just, like, call a cops and walk away and leave, let the phone ring and have them come and arrest this dude? Because he sucks. <laughs> also, I didn't like when they used a real picture of two young girls in that scene. I was like, this is, I know it's, like, of the time, and I think how they did certain art with this game, but that that one hit weird. I was like, I don't like it here. This is too weird. Yeah, uh, after after the different. drug dealer one, I wrote down like, okay, Ethan has just actually committed a crime. Like, yeah. <laughs> now, like now he is gonna go to jail. <laughs> yeah, he's a murderer. I mean, and he's not like he. I mean, I'm sure there was some evidence in the room. He wasn't that like careful. Wait, does he leave the gun? No. Okay. Uh, not that dumb. Yeah. Also, I was gonna say like, of... oh, I'll just leave my gun here with my fingerprints on it. They'll never know. <laughs> Speaking of that gun, when he first opens the shoebox in the hotel and he just dumps it, like he sees the gun in there and then he just dumps it all out. I'm like, what are you doing? Have you never seen a gun before? Like, it also could be loaded. So, he's been so careful with the box before that. Literally opening the locker. He's very slow. <laughs> Pulling yeah. it out. He's very slow. Opening it. He's very slow. Then he's like, it's a piece of paper and a gun. Shakes box. Like a kid at Christmas. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, Ethan, maybe you don't deserve to be in town right now. <laughs> like, oh, please, huh. What's the first, is the first trial the power plant or the first trial the car? Car. The car. car. The first okay. trial is the car. Elena, I think you wanted to say something? Oh, I was just going to say this whole game is Ethan trying to not get Darwin out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It took me a second, but it hit real good. Woof. Like I like that. It's really fun. I think the car one is my favorite one because it's just very much like it's intense. No one is like you're putting other people at risk in a way that, but you know, if you're, it's like he has to really do this really hard thing. And I feel like it's a challenge to like show courage. And I don't have to maim myself in some way. And I appreciate that. And I don't know, like that's the thing. The drug dealer he sent to kill, I was wondering, I was like, I wonder if this dude is supposed to be connected to Shelby in some way. And Shelby specifically is picking, hey, go murder this dude because I need him dead. Like, I, that's kind of what I would be guessing. Because they also, the drug dealer connection with the doctor who owns the house, I could see it, but I don't, I have a feeling they never really highlight it any, in any route. You know, the, the drug dealer and Scott Shelby, I think that's an interesting thing because it's another example of a parent who might not be very good to their children, or at least that's his interpretation of it. Because, you know, like, it, being a drug dealer, it puts you at higher risk of violent crimes, and he has this young daughter so it's also putting her at risk. So yeah. I think Scott Shelby is like, this is another shitty dad. Go take care of <laughs> yeah. him. Yeah, and that's why it's like part of me wanted to shoot him. And I was like, can I do anything else to get this man in trouble without putting me in trouble? And I was like, well, there's really not. All right, I'll just leave. Pistol whip and I'm out. See you. <laughs> See, I I read it is like, because you, fi- you find out that Scott used to be on the same police force as Blake. So I took it is like maybe Scott like w- was never able to like arrest this person 
Like he didn't have enough evidence. No, so if he just yeah, has like that. someone go and murder them, then those kids are <laughs> safe. You know, even yeah, though that's like a sense. fucked up reasoning, you know, he's like, I got to save those kids. How about murder? You know, <laughs> like that's that's the thing is like if it fits within his narrative, he's very straight. Like, oh, yeah, that kid's got to die. It sucks. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But the it's but then when it comes to be. when it comes to baby, <laughs> he's like, oh, there's a kid in there. Fine. I got to go help him out. And he also is testing the dads. That's why, like that was an interesting. I thought I was like, wow, he really is coming in and saving this mom who just happens to be trying to, you know, yeah, at the right time. And then he's like. His line, oh, what is he? Oh, the lines in that are probably some of my favorite Shelby lines of like, oh, I still got some maternal instincts in me after all. And I'm like, oh, Shelby. All right. <laughs> you got to pass on this one because you saved this random mom's life and have encouraged her to get help. It's And he, he does that with, I think, all of them. At least, like, if there's a femme person who is, you know, not the person who did the trials, he's like, hey, what happened? What happened to that guy? Where'd he go? And it's like, oh, like, he just disappeared. Don't know what happened. And you're like, oh, what a shame. Well, you should get help. You're fine. I have no trial or problem with you. You're good. And it's like, oh, Shelby. He's such a goofy guy. Just just a goofy little guy. <laughs> That's how I feel about Jaden. So, I mean, um, I think, you know, you fall in love with somebody. You just, you let him be. <laughs> oh. About the uh, the rat trial, the one where you have to crawl through glass. Like, yes. if they die in there, is Sh- Shelby going to like clean that out like every once in a while? Like, because no, I mean, it's, Wait, it's what? What we to me. Doing? To me, it's insinuated that Shelby had to crawl through those pipes himself to lay the glass mm-hmm. backwards. Oh, yeah, and then there's yeah. and then there's the exit door before the electric pylon part. <gasps> But then he also had to rig the, like, he had to make it through the pylons to put the clue at the end of it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I was wondering, because he was like, he said it's an abandoned building, but then the electrical system is still working. And the electric, yeah. I don't know a lot about electrical grids and how they work, but I'm like, did Shelby turn these back on? What's Shelby doing? How does <laughs> right. Shelby know about this? Interacting with it, making it a, a tool in his repertoire. And I'm like, I, he, we don't got time. We got to keep he, going. He had to have at least done that one trial. Like, you know, like the other ones I can clearly see, like, if you can do this, you can have the clue, you know, but that that one he had to do himself. He did a this... little play test. <laughs> yeah. He was if like, will this work? I can. So I I don't know if it's true because a lot of stuff is like varying memory because I, I swear there was a moment where I, I, I don't know why, but I thought Ethan could die from the poison, but I looked it up and I was wrong. But I think in the tunnels, he, in fact, does not clean it up because I think you can. One of the women that Shelby interviews says that her her husband never came home. I think you can find a skeleton in the tunnels dead. What? <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah, because there is yeah. the one where he yeah that he never came home. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I mean, I mean, especially that place is an abandoned building. It makes sense. But I think other ones he has to. But that one, not as much because yeah, it's like, who's going to go here? You know, well, but then they'd still find him eventually. And they'd be like, hey, why was the dad? Of this, you know, I we can use genes to go through bones and to figure out whose bones these are. Why is the dad of the kid who got died from the origami killer in this weird spot with all these funky glass and active pylons? Hmm. Like it's gonna. I. I. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, would raise questions. Too, yes. I'm getting too close to the writing, and I'm getting upset. <laughs> <laughs> the fun little <laughs> game. We just keep trucking. The driving yeah. one was all right. Like I. 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 I got through it. I didn't get through it perfect like Nate did because I wasn't going for a trophy. But that took me so long and i was like <laughs> i was like legitimately this is impossible yeah. i was like i think they just put this trophy here but then thank god bless sorry if you can hear my kids right now uh god bless whoever online said hold your controller like a steering wheel because that worked a hundred percent of the time like okay yeah That's cool but even then you have to take like specific routes so if you don't get the trophy then then you have to redo that chapter it's a mess it's a nightmare I mean, yeah, and also from what I remember, because I I just skipped it this time. Cause, but from what I remember, I, the fourth trial is fine too. I think I don't know the fifth trial. I I don't like the fifth trial for what it's trying to do, which is the poison, the electric glass pile or trial. I'm like, it's just weird and things don't check out. And then the second one with oh, which ones? Oh, the, that's the finger, right? Yeah. yeah, the finger I don't like. I I did it this time. I do not like that one. We got to cut off part of your finger. I, I like how I, much stuff there is to do. Like I it's think, like, oh, I got to make this as good as possible. And you can make them suffer. <laughs> yeah. You can make them just fucking hate life real fast. I think they legitimately cut that guy's finger off. The way he screams and reacts, <laughs> I was like, "There's no way that <laughs> like that's insanely good acting." I yeah, I do want to take a moment and say like I like 
almost all the actors and their performances in this. I think they do a great job. It's probably especially with David Cage breathing down their neck and going, nah, more wacky. Shelby, I need you to be wackier. <laughs> but like, yeah, I think I, and I think the thing that's a little hard is the technology was like, okay, but it wasn't quite there yet. The receptionist at the hotel with Madison, gross. And it's very clear that they, they paint that and write that well. It's like, oh, this dude's gross. And we know it. Whatever he's doing with his mouth in that scene, I could not understand. His mouth is just constantly moving. And I'm like, maybe it's a person thing. Like maybe it's a physical thing. But I, it also kind of looks like he's like chewing. And I'm like, is there supposed to be it's gum? What is happening in this scene? It's supposed to be a gross thing. Like, how can we make this guy grosser? Because, I mean, yeah, it, it does fit that thing. you have a shitty man who's like, blah, 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 blah. you'll make it. Making just making mouth movements. I mean, I, I I'm thinking things I do not want to say, but it fits the character of what I think they're thinking. I'm pretty sure he's chewing tobacco. Oh, okay, that's probably better than what, I, what my brain's going to. That was my thought. I was like, maybe there's that, but there's no. I feel like there should be a sound effect, but it's literally just no sound effect. Except See? for him like breathing and making like air noise and like, <laughs> but there's no. See, like, I, and I'm like, what are we doing here? I mean, I'm just having like, spit tobacco. Like, that's I, what, trust me, they do it a lot. Sure? I thought he was chewing on the scenery. <laughs> I also at that point, Madison, I walked her off the sidewalk and I tried to get her to walk up and she was like floating and like glitching. And I was like, okay, well, Madison, calm down. I went back and then it let me up. And I was like, oh, I have you, Rain. You and your little quirks physically. I was also thinking about like there's that one scene of Madison after Ethan, after one of the trials when she's cleaning him up, when she's helping patch him up and stuff. And then they have sex. And I'm just like, you know, are you really going to be in the mood for sex if you've just been That's... retrocuted and like, like, okay, let's fuck? Like, right? I'm like, oh. Yeah. yeah, he has an electricity kink. <laughs> yeah, that would make a lot more sense. Yeah, that's the problem with that, but the scene I'm before, voltage, I think. the scene before, he's like, I need to find him. I'm up low on time. So that's why I double checked. I'm like, there's a sex scene before, right? And it's like, <laughs> ah, forget about it. I'm, I need a five minute break. I'm like, no, yeah. that's not who you've been this whole time. But also, also why is she sleeping with him? Like, what made her go, holla, hey, guy, you're all injured with no idea why. Let's fuck. Like, mm, I see. It's not the so, bonding. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. That's what I heard. I thought, and I'm like, I don't want them to have sex because if they end up together, it's fine. But I don't want to be because of trauma bonding. And it, but her choices are so unclear because her character is so not like portrayed. But now apparently, you guys said she's a reporter or a writer. Reporter, she's, reporter, yeah, and a writer. A, she's but, a reporter. So yeah, that at least it makes it a little more informative because yeah, up to that point, and the story makes it like I feel like that's kind of like a bad Shelby. But with her, is like. Why is she doing any of this? And you don't find out until the end. Like, oh, it's because she was getting a scoop. And it's like, I kind of wish you had told me that at some point. Like, it doesn't feel like a whole grand reveal. Like, whoa, motive. And I'm like, I don't yeah, know. That was frustrating. The only way you find that out is if Ethan sleeps with her. And then he, like, looks like he goes he to get his, his jacket, jacket. And it knocks her. her notebook out. Well, I don't. I don't. Think and then he gets weirdly mad. I I. I think she is a journalist, but I don't. I legitimately don't think she was actually like doing journalist stuff. I I think she was legitimately helping him. I think it's also what you're supposed to get and imply. Yeah, be, yeah it's, because it's she. The class, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I think I do think it's funny that they. She also makes a comment earlier where she's like, "Oh yeah, I love patching up my brothers," but it's also even weirder because like, so you think about patching up your brothers while patching up Ethan, and then you have sex with him. <laughs> don't, don't, Ooh. Don't <laughs> Ooh, icky. Hey, no, she's from you. Alabama. All right. No. <laughs> oh. But uh, e even sillier fact that I think is probably one of my my fun uh, my favorite facts was we we're talking about the endings earlier where they get together. Uh, did anyone notice what the apartment that they move into is at the end if they end up together? It's her apartment, right? Essentially. Nope. Oh. It's no. a vaulted ceiling with some exposed brick and some nice columns. It's, and the columns are from the apartment from Indigo Prophecy, so they move into the apartment from oh, Indigo Prophecy. Which means nothing to me, by the way. Connected mm. universe. The DCU. Yes. yes. So it is implied in this universe that either Indigo Prophecy has already happened or they managed to dodge it somehow. <laughs> huh. Okay. When Ethan finds out that Madison is a journalist, he has this very bad line. Where he's like, you're a pretty good nurse for a fucking journalist. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's fucking funny. Like, why? I, I remember. I, yeah, I got that part too. I was like, why are you like? That's nothing to do with the opposite. Like, who? Also, who gives a shit if she's a journalist? Like, okay, she's helping you either way. Like, had she not come there and help him, you would oh, just been fucking. 
You would have died on the balcony of the hotel the first time you interact. Because he can't even get to the room without her help. So like, Which I, I stared at him for so long on that balcony to see if there was like any extra animation. And nope, he just he just hangs there until you walk up to him. Nope. Can we talk about Madison's beautiful apartment on a journalist oh. salary? Can we yeah. talk about the, a beautiful? That apartment operates in my brain in a way that I can't. It feels like a liminal space where I'm like, okay, there is food. There is a bathroom. I think it's just very... Like, why is there... The, the, it's, it's like back a back room. It's, yeah, it's like a back room. They, It's like a retrofitted place. But why are there three showers? I'm so confused about what this warehouse place is. Huh? Or a prison. Yeah. Oh. oh, imagine, imagine there's like some apartment complex, like a development company. They're like, listen, you used to be caged in, but now you're going to want to live there. <laughs> yeah, the sink, the That's sink. in the marketing material. Hey. <laughs> The sink for the bathroom is like a circular, like public sink, like for multiple people's use. It's such a, it's such a weird space, and I'm really happy there's only I think one scene because I'm just in there like Madison. How do you live here? I'm getting the willies just looking around. I also loved it. Whoa, I so want wild. to live there. I have literally been searching for an apartment like that since playing Heavy Rain. And let me tell you, Madison is everything I want to be as a person. I'm in love with her. I love the you windows. Look in Boston, I, where you can have uh, some clam chowder? Oh, uh, I don't think, yeah, in Pittsburgh too. <laughs> like, it feels like almost like a, a ridiculous, like, not New York City, but like New York and somewhere in like, in around, like, like view of like, windows on every side and this like wild street views. I like that part, but then when I go to like the layout of furniture and appliances and like how things are like just I my brain is like, what is what is this big step up? Why I don't like it big... either. It's too open and that bothers me for some Why is reason. Absolutely the, stunning. The oh. windows too? Like you better hope those windows are tinted on the outside. Like otherwise you can just never have lights on in your apartment. Like because people can just look up and be I mean, like, if you're oh. that high up, I don't nobody's gonna see you really anyway if you're the highest building. I'm wondering how high it was now, because I'm like, yeah, was I it high know. or was I three stories up? I can't yeah, tell. I, it has to have been a high rise. It has to have been. Like you hope so. Like it's yeah. way too open for those size windows, man. Like <sighs> it's I oh I, it's Absolute a liminal space. Stunning. It's stunning. It's, I, there's parts, it's very much, her apartment is a perfect representation of the things of how I feel about this game. There's parts I like, there's parts that are cool, there's parts that don't make any sense to me, no matter how hard I go, why are there three shower heads along this back wall like it's a prison, but then I walk out in this open living room, what's happening? And I just go, you know what? I just need to like it for what it is. The good part, acknowledge the bad parts, and keep moving and not think about it too much. And that's, I like it for that. So I actually have an explanation that I think is plausible. Because I've been apartment hunting recently. And one of the places I've been, well, I've looking looking for condos with like kind of an industrial feel to them. And I saw this one building that was originally a school that was turned into an apartment complex. And it's huge windows and it has those sinks, those circular sinks. I used to use those as a kid, too. And they've pretty much taken out the ceiling. So you have these really vaulted ceilings with a ton of, like, mm. pipes up there. But it looks similar to what Madison had. So I'm wondering if maybe it was an old schoolhouse that was changed. And by schoolhouse, I don't mean, like, the 1800 schoolhouse. I mean, like, yeah. a, a modern, a modernish schoolhouse from, like, the 80s that was adapted into an apartment complex. But, but then that it's also a high, it's a high rise though, and I don't know schools that are high rises. So I I'm not trying to poke holes your theory. It's just like I get so confused, and I want I want an answer. I just can't find one that I'm like, yeah, that's that explains it enough that I'm happy. I'm just like that kind of makes sense, but then I, I fall apart. I had the answer, which is obviously the super simple one. This is this is a game made by a French man <laughs> and a French team. They have no idea how anything here works. Are you telling me Ethan is a dad who has a wife and two kids and they live only off of his salary of being an architect? A really famous architect that I might add at that. The layout that Ethan chases a drug dealer in where he that the that apartment has like 70 doors. Because they run around that house for like a solid 15 oh, yeah. yes. fucking minutes. Doors, doors. doors that lead to different parts of the house to like i mean it should have been a much richer drug dealer for that because that's way too big of a, of a space like come on now uh, there are there are so many doors like again shit. it's the layout of that building now that's another thing that hurts my brain i'm like wow yeah i run through this room and then i run through that room and then i'm in this room <laughs> and there's four doors connected to the child's room okay sure yeah that makes sense 
don't use logic. <laughs> you you go to the psychiatrist's office, which is not a fucking yeah. psychiatrist's office, where there's a big poster that says ego, and he uh, like scans your brain <laughs> with a little device, and then he yells at you. And uh, also, yeah, Ethan's getting scammed on that one. Like he's yeah, paying well, money oh, to yeah. this person who's not even helping. And but also, it, does he really? You don't think? I feel like he didn't have a whole. He wouldn't have a whole lot of money at that point after divorce and everything. Maybe that's where all his money's going. He's like, I just need the <laughs> most expensive therapist with the bougiest office that's the most, like, d- but, respectfully, dick-waving therapist I've ever seen. Like, yeah, this is my office with massive, like, thing and these cool electrodes that tell me exactly what you're feeling and these massive, like, windows I have the, like, the filters for. I was, That office is wild. And I, I saw the concept art for it, and I was like, God, they really like this design, and it's buck wild. Y'all went too hard, I think, with this one. I'm going to ask my therapist at my next appointment and be like, do you have any of those things you can put on my brain and like tell me exactly <laughs> what my trauma is so we can my just get over it? Per second, literally like depressed. Oh, kind of sad. Hey, in the middle. It's like they're so specific like this, that. Uh-huh. Yep, I know it. Uh, and, then, what? and then you have the real villains of the whole game of all, which is Ethan's wife and psychiatrist, because the wife reveals that he blacks out. But even then, I, I was reading something online where it's like he go they go to the psychiatrist and the psychiatrist reveals medical info because they do tell him like, oh, if you have Pretty info, quickly too. yeah, if you have info that he's he's doing this. You need to give it to us, but any psychiatrist can tell that, no, he does not suffer from schizophrenia. He suffers from, like, DID, dissociative something disorder. And it's like, yes. so if he, yeah, so if he has that, he wouldn't be committing the murders. But especially even going to that, we prove Ethan doesn't have any money. I don't even know how Shelby has money because he affords all these elaborate salt traps, which means he's had to buy. There's eight kids, so nine with Sh- with uh, Sean. So that means that's nine cars. That's, that's well. Uh, he, he gets the one repainted. This is a yeah. this is a killer on a budget. Apparently, he works with Matt. Also, Jack. how many Curry parents book. went through all that? Like some, there's some deadbeat dads been like, "No, nah, I'm good. Fuck it." Oh there's yeah, I'm no, uh, sure. The one you saved from the the convenience store did not do any of them. He tapped the box and was like, "Okay." Well, that's I had that thought. He pours the box out and he has one, and he's like, "It's a note." I don't understand it. And then of course it's just uh, Shelby collecting the info, so he doesn't care to look at it. But I was like. It was very unclear to me, like, well, did you do four and not what? What happened here? Did you only get one? What's up with this? Are you only I giving mean, him I it's possible one? he did the did them differently. Like, you got one clue, then you did the one clue, you got another clue. Maybe, then... but it's it's weird because I feel like his mode of operandi is, you know, uh, J- Jaden's always talking about is like, D, he has a specific way of doing things. It's got to be like this. Oh, there is. Oh, the. The the therapist tries really hard. He's like, I can't give you that info. And then he starts beating him up. And he's yeah. really scared. <laughs> That's why you're like, he gives it up so easy. I'm like, dude, he's a therapist. And a cop's beating the shit out of him. He's like, while please Jayden, just stop. While Jaden yells in the background, Blake, this is out of line. You're going to lose your badge, Blake. <laughs> like, like, just grab his arm. Like, <laughs> uh, at least, No, that one you can interrupt. Like, pretty quick. But the, the guy in, in his uh, apartment... With the with the uh, cro- crucifix, you can't. You you just has three lines of like the elevator. Yes, please, Helena. He's he's like, Blake, this isn't you. Blake, calm down. This isn't you, man. So I think it's a glitch, <laughs> but I, because I redid that scene, I reloaded it. Because uh, the first time I did it, I did it in like the rising of like he elevating the beat up and like how aggressive he's getting and I, there's like delay of how quick you can do the lines of like because i think it all like like hey come on down and he's like hey that's you're out of line and he's like you need to calm the fuck down but when i reloaded it it let me do all three in a row so he's still walking around him and it's just Jaden quickly going hey man calm down you're gonna lose your bitch you're out of line and i'm like this is beautiful <laughs> i love how quickly he like it just is a glitch of, like being like i need well, to go like, to 10 of me. why is this cop just beating up people for no reason <laughs> it does, it does fit cop. He's some stuff, to any- but I'm just like Jaden has that thought of like he's trying to get a confession out of him. That's gonna do nothing if it's of you know a force. And I'm like Jaden is him. Jaden is constantly going. This dude's an idiot. And I'm like, thank you, Jaden. I love you. Stop this idiot. I mean, it's not that far off to what to what's happened in in this freaking country, but it was just like <laughs> uh, and that, uh, that part of the game has age. Yeah, that has. <laughs> it's gotten. It's gotten better um, with age. That yeah, one, with that part, yeah, that's become more factual. Unfortunately, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. When Blake is beating up the psychiatrist, you can also ask Jaden, like, encourage it, and you know, he's like telling the psychiatrist, like, "Come on, you don't want to get beaten forever." <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> no, my boy, my just give Jayden us the info. Never... 
and it's also always fun to roll because the mechanic we've not mentioned once is the we mentioned I think a little bit, but the internal thoughts you can go through to like get what's going on a character. It's really fun if you go through all of them sometimes to hear like like when Madison is helping Ethan, she's like, "Oh, we got to get out of here. I need to leave this dude. Oh, I really miss. I hope he ends up okay. Oh shit, I'm gonna get in trouble. Oh yeah, please, Helena. Oh no, no, I wasn't oh, raising sorry. my hand. I was just uh, uh, I, I was in love with what you were saying. Yeah, it's it's really great. I mean, all those little parts of like the whole spectrum of feelings, and I'm like, yes, I love it. Thank you. I mean, you. that does happen for. I mean, oh, it I, does. There's been it's, times it's, where I'm like, I shouldn't be here. I don't want to leave. I mean, funny. I can think of a moment that I'm not going to share that I had that like I should I should st- I should leave. No, no, I shouldn't. So it's funny to just again. hear the the layers because it it's totally random how you click them and you know you know how you do it, but like it it could be like a sequential buildup, but sometimes like like Jaden yelling at the dude to stop beating him up sometimes they like are really loud thoughts and then like mm, i am kind of hungry also every time you open up a fridge every time you open up a fridge i shit you not there is like just loose food like uh in shelby there's just a very bad sandwich i wish i'd taken a screenshot and it, i literally sent him i typed it to joe just being like i hate the sandwiches and it's like just yeah fridge time for some fridge taste and i'm like oh that's gross and that's not you live your life but i'm i can't process this sandwich right now this little square sandwich cube like it's a star field up in here (laughs) so when i was taking french in high school i learned that uh they don't really have like freezers like they don't use freezers in france so like they you know they just store all their food in the fridge i could be way off base this is what my french teacher told us okay Back in 2009. So, so when it, like when you make dinner for Sean and he pulls out like the TV dinner from the fridge, I was like, yeah, that's accurate to like French living, but like we would have a free that that would be in the freezer and we would poke holes in it, you know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. they needed like- an American consultant to be like, that's not how we keep our frozen food, dude. <laughs> that's a really good observation. Yeah. And then there's also just loose pizza on a plate. And I'm like, and then the, why is it already on a plate? Like that. I mean, I, well, I did find out that Europeans have smaller fridges. Yes. Mm-hmm. They go shopping more frequently than we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I did not find anything about a freezer, though. So I, I don't know if your French teacher was telling you lies or not. Well, <laughs> so. you know, Europeans are just living on candlelight still. So they probably just put their <laughs> freezables in the snow. <laughs> I mean, hey, we could we can hear sometimes. I mean, you can't where you are, but I can. <laughs> yeah, I leave I leave my soda in the car right now. Like, one, it cuts mm. down on me drinking soda because I never want to go outside to get one. <laughs> but two, it's always cold. Mm-hmm. Which you know, you don't hear it will freeze soon. I I forgot that you guys are in different areas because I'm in Florida <laughs> and I was like, oh, a nice tempered <laughs> soda. How how delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear you know where hot. I'm at, in the great state of Minnesota, where it's about to be Minnesota. Bull- oh man, okay, you reminded me when we went we went to New Mexico, and somebody asked my wife where we were from, and she said it in the accent Minnesota, and she's like, "What am I doing?" It was great. Right after she said it, the guy just looked at her like, "All right," but it was it was great. I don't know where she was like, I don't know where that came from, but yeah, she did the whole thing where she said it just like that. It's wonderful. And then she asked to order a pop, and then the guy looked at her like, "What are you saying?" <laughs> But that's uh, the joys of other states. I lived in Minnesota for four months, and I sometimes still let out the Minnesota, you know? <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. I, I mean, was I, only there for fucking four months. I <laughs> never do it. But, like, when, when I first, I mean, I have, okay, when I was in Boston, I was, I, I had to be careful my accent. Because when I go to other places, I ask when the Minnesota accent comes out more, I'll, I'll, I'll enunciate certain words. But, yeah, they do, like, I'll never forget when I went to Boston and I went to go order clam chowder. And it was, it was clam chowder and lobster rolls on the sign. I'm like. Okay, Boston. Okay. It's so. a lot of fish in one dish. Yeah. It was, well, I, I had so much fish when I was there. It was wonderful. I had, I had everywhere I went, I had a bowl of clam chowder. It was great. <sighs> Even at the airport. <laughs> right before we left, oh I was getting one last. Airport clam chowder? Like, it was a really fancy fish restaurant, like seafood restaurant, like fancy. It wasn't bad. It was so it was good. good? It was not as good as a restaurant. I just think of airport food, and I just Salem. think of like the most disappointing. No, it was like I've a like had. a fancy restaurant. I paid enough for that fucking clam chowder, but it was great. So, real yeah. life clam chowder. Uh huh. I fucking I I enjoyed Boston. We went to Salem. Salem's awesome, by the way. You want to go to a place that has a bunch of devil statues and stuff in 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 their stores and little satanic candles and stuff? That's the place you go. It was great. It was awesome. Yeah. Just a real cool experience. I wonder why that is. Any <laughs> no, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> anytime Mike mentions that he went to Boston, I can only think of that D4 game from that that's made by the people who made Deadly Premonition. And there's scenes where they just eat a bunch of food 
and it's just disgustingly weird. <laughs> okay. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'll, I'll send you later. Okay. Uh, but uh, one, one thing that we, we skip along across, which I feel would have been a much better ending for this game and not have involved the stupid twist, because I also feel like they also had different ideas where they didn't write who the killer was until like the very end. But we also have proof that Shelby also tests a different bad dad because he goes after... I thought he was a mafia, head of a mafia, but he's just like a head of a construction site or a construction company. To be fair, oh, yeah. depending on when this takes place, the mafia did own the construction, most of the construction type stuff at a certain time in New York in this area. So, OK, that's fair then. I mean, they completely control the construction industry, like concrete, especially they control completely at one point. Well, they they they're treated mm-hmm. like the mafia because they throw Shelby in the car and throw him in the goddamn river. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah, definitely mafia. I had an issue with that as well, Joe. But then the game explains it away as like the son killed a kid in the manner of the origami killer. So that's why Shelby is like looking into it. Yeah, but Shelby knows who the killer is. It's right. Like, but he's mean, <laughs> killer. like, yeah. no, like, why are but you he's even... looking into it? Because he's like, why did you kill? You know, he's like, why did you kill that kid? Like, you know, but he's doing it under the guise of like, I know what you did. And then the dad, I guess, paid for it to go away. Believable. Yeah. That is very much one scene where I was on alert, like, hey, what's he going to say about this? Because he knows he didn't actually do it. And right. he literally, he says nothing and has no thoughts. He just, like, he's yeah. like, after he fights the guys, he's like, hey, you better get out of here. I'm going to kill you. And he, he just walks out. And I'm like, that's fair. How else are you going to write? Like, you didn't really do it. I did it. And I'm like, you can't. So you just go, just, nothing. He says and thinks nothing. bothers me. I don't know. Also, I don't like playing as killers in games. That's, unless you that, are like a, you're supposed to be. I don't like stuff like this. <clears throat> That kid was the sun was high as hell watching whatever fucking cartoon that was because it was like a 30 second cartoon and it just kept looping and he is just having the time of his life. That cartoon gives me the willies one and two. I took it more as he's not mentally. I mean, it could be both. He was I was saying there's something mentally not well with this person. And so he's like fixated and he could be on drugs because he's rich and doesn't you know have healthy coping systems and lifestyle. So. (laughs) Yeah. Also, yeah. like the the one time I got well, not the one time, but one of the, the first time I got high, and I went to Meow Wolf in Vegas, and every all the colors and everything it was amazing. I remember just laying down on the floor at one point because you could. It was how you're supposed to, and just staring at the ceiling. It was great. Fucking You've great. been high before? A few. Not. I don't do it as much as I used to <laughs> because I piss off Tiff when I do it. So there was I'm, such a, there was an interesting level of like going back and forth on what to say in like two seconds. It was great. Oh, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm stoned. Pretty much every other day because it's completely <laughs> legal here, and I use the term "gunked out of my gourd." Oh uh, yeah, on this recording quite often. So yeah, I have never gotten high in my life. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> What's a drug? <laughs> what, what is this marijuana you're talking about? Excuse me, it's the devil's lettuce. We got <laughs> walk away. So. Wacky tobacco. I got that at the Chipotle once. The Chipotle. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Well, oh, I can't. I can't do Chipotle. It makes. It, uh, I get blood in my underwear if I do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, I think we've got a little bag. I want to take this bag a little bit. Anyone South Park. Please, South, please Park. Do. South Park. Any particular joke. I'm sorry. points okay. and nuggets of worth talking about? Yes, that's. I appreciate the reference. Call. Uh, uh, and then uh, go, going through. Funny enough, being a good person, even though Shelby's the killer, does pay off because if you, I don't know how you get Ethan killed, but if you manage to. <laughs> only if you manage to only go as Ethan and then die during the final fight with Shelby. Shelby has a gets away, uh, funny enough, gets away scot free ending, which I think they do oh. phrase it like that. But uh, no, they I don't think they do phrase it like that. Like, or at least the trophy, the trophy is called like clean killer or something like that. And I was oh, like, so they, you had the opportunity to name it scot free, yeah, scot free. Okay, okay, so they did, they did fuck up. <sighs> I'm but, sorry, uh, I didn't mean to jump in, but it, it really bothered me that they one didn't of the worst the fuck up. Time. <laughs> well, that's one of the worst offenses of this game. I said everything. How could you? As long as you're a good person, everything works out in the end. Because don't forget, you also have your his sidekick the whole time. So if you save her during the car ride oh. and don't leave her there, Scott's walking down the street and she walks up and she's like, "So I did my own digging and find out that you did not hire any of the people that you told me that you did." And he's like, "Okay, and and she just straight up guns him down in the road." <laughs> Made me so happy. That she ending, got, he deserved it. I'm like, yeah. fuck you. I have a, that I, ending I, is I so I good. Ending. I think I don't remember. She died somewhere the first time I played it, and for me, and I was. She only about dies it. in the car. Yeah. Yeah, it must have been there. But I'm excited to see uh, that catch up. Right. If you yeah. don't, if you don't try to resuscitate her, because Shelby will not die in that car. If because I guess you he'll get free eventually. But if you don't get free and then get her free 
and le- and then you eventually the timer runs out and he'll just swim out. She dies. Yeah, I think hey. it's I was gonna almost, say, I, I don't I, think I don't think you can kill Shelby. I'm trying to remember. No, no Ethan can get arrested. Can. Ethan get killed. You can kill Madison three different times. I think because for some reason let's you know let's kill Madison and you can kill Jaden. Jaden died a lot in this game. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. He, he can't. For die me, a lot he went. He went. The, he went in the trash compactor for me in the end. So, yeah. and then Shelby got away, and then then I was like, oh, I, I, I let Shelby get away, and then when Lauren showed up and put the gun, she's like, I found the man who killed my child and shot him. I'm like, yeah, possible death is happy. the old is the old warehouse fight and the epilogue. Those are the only ways you can die. Everything else is like, yep. Which is funny. Again, next time if you want to play this, just don't do any quick time of it with Shelby successfully and watch this man just get pummeled for it like four <laughs> hours. Like, I love Shelby, but, like, he is the antagonist, so, like, it wouldn't really be like, oh, bye, Shelby, you're gonna get beat up by this dude for five I minutes. I liked him my, my first playthrough. I don't like him anymore, because I know. Well, now next I don't know, I really don't, do li- whenever you deal with, like, a child killer, you you have to be careful what you're writing to, because you can you can write yourself into some shitty stuff. So. Cat. Yes, cute cat, thank you. I was holding back, but I couldn't, thank you. For those that can't see, which is everyone with the, with the, with the, with the <laughs> us here, Helena's <laughs> holding the cat, Peach. Oh! <gasps> That's cute. What are, uh, what anyway. are the cat's thoughts on uh, <laughs> Jason? <laughs> oh, please. My friends and I made that joke for probably years. It's basically throughout high school. Anytime we were just bored, we go, Jason, 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 Jason. I, I can't make that joke because my partner's name is Jason and he actually hates this game for that reason. Oh, <laughs> fine. Has, you just do, has your partner one. ever Sean! gotten lost to where Sean! you could yell Jason? <laughs> uh, I try. I try not to because if I do, I'll probably get like <laughs> bopped in the head. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a better person than I am because I would. Constantly... I would do it. Yeah, it's worth it. I think. If I could ever deliver a line the way he delivers anytime he screams Sean, I feel like I would have made it as a performer. Because God, him screaming Sean hits for me. Jason is wacky and goofy, and I can't take it seriously. But then I forgot when you're running through the street and he's just going Sean. And I'm like, Jesus, he's really feeling that inside, huh? Well, yeah, I mean, he's lost his son and everything. No, it's happened. very fair, but it, like, yeah, the it's, actor, it's good. Actor, yeah, it hits. It hits good. The Jason um, part I don't like, because I also hate fucking balloons. I hate, I hate balloons <laughs> with passion. I hate Jason. Hot take. I hate Jason. I think Jason's a little shit. And I'm not happy he got hit at all, but like, I'm like, yeah, dude. Like, he said, he literally is like, hey, bud, don't go too far. Gets to the balloon. Hey, bud, don't get away from me. Does it again? I'm like, well, third time, he, but I, I tried al- so hard with you. He also leaves the mall and crosses the street. Like, <laughs> holy shit, kid! And yeah, he also would not have died from that car. But he's lost, looking for his dad. He's like, I know, I got to go outside and cross the street. My dad will be over there. Oh. I'm happy. As a father, kids just do that shit. You could tell them stay right mm-hmm. next to me, and then they just walk off. And it's like, what world are you living in, dude? Like, come back. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I, I lost my son. Me. Twice in my life where I was outside with him and he disappeared. I'm like, what the fuck? And yeah, I know that fear. Like, I mean, we were around a church and I just ran around the whole church. I'm like, where the hell is he? And he was looking for me going the, uh, around the church with me and took us. I'm like, finally, I, I and if I stopped, I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And he just showed up. And I'm like, and I realized, yeah, he was looking for me. I was looking for him. I'm going happy Jason got hit. Get fucked, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pay the car? Did you pay the drive? <laughs> I did. I said, make this messy. Yeah. I also well, agree. in the deleted se- or not deleted scene, originally Quantum Dreams wanted to be where like he they like you <laughs> saw him go flying, and then P- Sony said no. That's so, a lot. I Christ, I David K. That's what they wanted originally. They wanted you saw him get hit, and like because like in that accident he wouldn't be dead. Yeah. And Sean yeah. wouldn't be that injured, or not Sean, but Ethan wouldn't be that injured because it's not that bad of an accident, but. Sony said no to what he had. Yeah, I I was seeing they were I was talking to watch some videos like yeah he he wanted him to go fucking flying and he wanted to be like a like the car going faster and they're like nope. Mm-mm, yeah, not doing that. Like, age is I, like I want the kid to flip nineteen times. <laughs> yeah, I want you to know why he died and then like, you're gonna slam know. straight down on asphalt. <laughs> I think we needed a middle ground because yeah even though like you can argue like obviously the scene slows down but the, even then with that it's like. He took the whole force of that impact. How, did even did you kill the kid somehow? Like, did you crush him? What? How did you do this, my man? Yes. So, so the idea is that both Ethan and and Jason get hit by the car, but the Ethan survived with the same force. It couldn't kill an adult. It couldn't kill an adult, but it could kill a kid. So basically, the idea is that his neck gets snapped. Okay. So, like, do we think that Ethan blacking out is just like a traumatic brain injury? 
it's supposed I, to be. Yeah. Yeah. I wish yes. it was, but apparently it's a, psych- a psychic connection to Shelby, and that's upsetting. But that's not in the game, is it? No. Well, it, it what did you say be? earlier, Joe? It, it was supposed to be in the game, but it got cut. That's why whenever he wakes up from blacking out, he made an origami figure. Because whenever Shelby's in high stress, which is whenever, because technically whenever Shelby kills the kid, he makes the origami figure. So Shelby being highly stressed out activates the blacking out. So as of right now, there's no explanation for why he makes was the Shelby origami driving figure. the car. Because it's a woman you see driving the car. So Shelby sees it. No, Shelby sees it. That wouldn't connect you with the. I don't like he, he sees <laughs> he sees Ethan jump out to save Jason. Well, it, it is traumatic for Shelby because the whole idea is that he he saw his which I'm also going to bitch about here in a second. But he sees a dad <laughs> save his he sees a dad save his son, which is something that his dad never did. So it it also fucks him up. But then why would you try to kill the guy who sa- tried to save his son, kill his other, his only son? Like because he's a psychopath and he failed to do it. I'm guessing it's like, hey, you travel wasn't good enough. Here's a, here's a round two. Go again. But it also makes me mad because he gets the whole idea of killing these kids from his brother dying. But it's also like a whenever they do the flashback, it's like, oh, no, I'm dying. I still have my head outside the water, but I still drowned. Please don't forget about me, Scott. I don't like that scene. It's hard. That's a hard scene. You know, that so drowning is a lot more quiet than you're told it'll be. Like in movies, everyone's screaming and thrashing. But like when kids have just the top of their face out of the water like that, they can still drown. That is okay. a sign that they're drowning because they, they lose the ability to be buoyant. So they're just trying to get air as they can, but they can still take in water and go. That does make sense too. Cause I, I guess the idea would be that the water's slowly filling up his lungs. I uh, had this terrible experience as a kid. I went to the YMCA and I was swimming and then I like, I just couldn't swim anymore. And I remember sticking my head out like that and I didn't have enough air to yell for anyone. So no one saw me. So I was just sitting there like trying desperately to get attention, but I couldn't do anything because I was so like shocked that it was happening. And finally, someone like grabbed me, just pulled me over the shallow end and I was fine. But I will never forget how terrifying that was. That makes sense. I'll stick with you. There's also this thing that can happen with kids. Like if they when you're giving them a bath, if they just like drink bath water, they can drown like later when they're sleeping, which is just like. I hate, as a dad, I hate when people tell me statistics like that. Because I'm like, don't fucking tell me this. Like, uh-huh. I'm already on edge trying to keep my yeah, kids, you know. Being a parent. It's, uh. not, not that I, like, put my kids in dangerous situations. At all. I'm not no, like, hey, I, drive this car life. against oncoming traffic to prove. <laughs> but, it's just uh, life. I mean, it, yeah, no, I, I know what you yeah. mean. I remember, like, with my son, when, like, just being, like, always being worried. Yeah. Or, like, it's SIDS. Like, oh, man. I, I can't imagine just any parent that has to go Did, through that, like. Did you know your baby could just stop breathing at one point in the middle yeah. of the night? Yeah, and, yep. and like the hospital tells you this, and you know, I said, "Well, like, what's the cause of that?" And they're like, "We don't know. <laughs> you guys haven't figured it out yet. Like, get to work." <laughs> or, yeah, but no, I remember that being awake, being like, "Oh, I'm gonna go check on my son. Is he breathing?" I mean, I do it with my animals because they're old now, and I look, "Are you breathing?" So I'll just start touching them, and they'll be looking at me like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm making sure you're not dead." Right. <laughs> so I get it. I was trying to get more info about Shelby just to like. Get some like like I was trying to process a little more his motive and stuff, and I found a wiki page and it says, "What makes him heinous?" First bullet point: Before the events of the game, he kidnapped and killed eight children by drowning them in rainwater. I'm like, "Yeah, that's a good opening point. That is why he is heinous. That is I, I one word to describe that is heinous. Yeah, sure. That's uh, and plus, I mean, wouldn't you? I was also thinking about this. Wouldn't Sean just be dead anyway from hypothermia from being in the cold, soaking water? He does, that's yeah. The, like one of the first things he says is, "It's I'm so cold." And I was like, well, "That's well, poor kid." Well, you'd be, yeah, you would just die from that. And he's pooping in the water. Yeah. And what are you well, drinking? Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, I never also, thought about that. Actually. If I'm gonna be a little bit picky about it, at the end, like if the rainwater fills up. I mean, one, you would lose tiredness, but there is a way you can wrap arms and legs around stuff where you don't use your own energy. It's just like you just sit there. But I feel like you could just eh, just stick your head up like, all right. I mean, you know, as long as you're close, but like, yeah, you don't want to do it for so long. But I was just like, come you on, could also, you hang in there a little longer. Come on. Because I can I can speak for a fact. Boston ain't warm. It's colder. So you would be you'll be freezing to death. And like what I, Helena said, yeah, and you're shitting in the water. Like, what are you drinking? I don't see it coming in. Here's some in snacks. Too? Here's some drink. Like. like after a while, wouldn't that like kind of break down your skin? Yes. I mean, if yeah, you know. yes. If it if it stays there, it will eat at your skin. So after this whole ordeal, he would have <laughs> needed to be hospitalized for quite a while. Yeah, he'd be yeah, fucking like, is, yeah, he, yeah, he's gonna have oh. some trauma. 
Oh, yeah. Like, 100%. Yeah. It rains outside, and he's going to be right. having Vietnam flashbacks. Mm-hmm. There's also, uh, I did tear up this time when I played it, because I forgot that they, like, fake you out with his death. Like, when you pull him out, and, like, you give him CPR, and he's not moving. And I teared up a little bit. I said, oh, damn, I don't, like, I guess I failed. I don't remember him dying here. And then he breathed, and I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> It's hard. Like this game still hits, still hits. Like I mean, I have issues with this game, but I, I still enjoyed it. Like and those scenes still hit me. Like as a father, especially like in you know my situation, like it hits. Like there's some moments in this game. I'm like, you know, there's good stuff. There's just, there's just yeah. some crap along with David Cage. If, if, I had, fr- if I had nickel for every time Mike had me on a podcast where it's an emotional dad game, I'm up to like five nickels already. <laughs> I'm curious what the five are, but I don't. <laughs> Bioshock Infinite, Walking okay. Dead. Okay. This, and I can't think of the other two off the top of my head, but I'll figure it out at some point. He hasn't done <laughs> God of War 2018 yet. I have not, no. Oh, yeah. That one's a pretty, like, sad oh, dad that's... one. Yeah. I haven't done Dad of War yet. I do want to. I've done the first God of War, but that's it. Different kind of sad dad in that one. Damn. That one's like angry dad, you know? Yeah. All right, any last things you guys want to say about Heavy Rain? Should we go to Shelf Stacker Box? Yes, the police can scar uh, Sean, by the way. Because if you don't what? show up, if you don't show up as Madison and you don't show up as and you don't show up as a uh, Jaden or you do show up as Jaden, but you don't Not tell him the police are outside. Ethan will walk out before Sean does and they will shoot him to death. And even funnier, the news will also say that whatever the the Jaden's buddy cop guy, whatever. They did not say he's fired. They say he's on suspension, which also proves that police are bad. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once, once again happens in our society Bad. yeah i mean yeah there's been multiple yeah cops that, that murder people and then yeah they're just they're they're out for a bit That's there it. was there was i was trying to remember it i can't be but i do love in all media bad cops are bad or this or that negative takes just age better and better and the other reference i have which is going to seem wild is paul blart mall cop 2 who, as Paul Blart is a mall cop security part, at one point, his daughter makes a reference to, like, a, he's like, well, you know, you should call a cop, because you got robbed. And he goes, I don't like cops. They, uh, they're ego. It's, it's too much. And I'm like, this movie is aged like milk, but that line has aged like a nice bundle of cheese. Mm. <laughs> Just kiss. So, you know, at least we have that for all the future. I don't think I ever need to see Paul Blart. I don't no, like... You don't. If it wasn't for a meme podcast, I would never have seen it myself, so... Okay. <laughs> all right. Anything else? Okay, let's go to Shelf Stacker Box. And, Helena, what about you? Shelf. I know it has holes in it. I know there are inconsistencies. I know it's kind of silly goofy. I love this fucking game. I have a tattoo for this game. It's one of my favorites. What's the tattoo? It's a paper crane. Oh, okay. Oh, that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Oh, wait, I don't think that is a paper crane. I'm, I'm not sure what that is. I think it's a bird. Maybe it's a bird. It's the paper from the cover. I can tell you that. Does that count? It's the one from the cover. Maybe I should have uh, done more research. There but oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I totally forgot that it, it's the same crane you can make because if when you bought this game originally for the PS3, it took forever to load up. So the game came with a piece of paper on how to make the origami crane. Oh, my gosh. That's that sick. Is That's cool. kind of cool. Yeah. That's cool as hell. Yeah. Mm. If. If, if you're installing Last of Us 2, if they had something like that, like, here's a PS Vita you can play Hotline Miami 2 on. Just watch out behind you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> here's a murder simulator. You could just hear it. Yeah, fuck. I don't, that was I, a bad I, example. I don't think there's anything happy in The Last of Us 2. <laughs> no, the game is. Ugh. I, I haven't played Last of Us 2. I played Last of Us 1, and I was like, nope, I am good after I beat that game. Okay, that's cool. He just, uh, that's cool. It's a neat little piece of paper, but milk just posted a picture of what it looks like in the thing. I don't think I must have bought it using because I didn't have that origami thing. Okay, all right, and I'll go next. I'm gonna put this on the shelf. Also, I know I bitched, but I beat this game in two days, and it was a combination of I didn't want to put it down, and I also really wanted to finish it because I wanted to move on. But I did enjoy myself. Like this is a I connected with this game a lot, and I did have fun with it. I never want to play it again. Three times is is plenty. But <laughs> in like. 13 years. So I'm good, I think. But I, I, I'm i going to put it on the shelf. I did enjoy it. And Joe? Uh, weirdly enough, I thought I was going to stack it, but I think I'll also put it on the shelf. This game is a very funny piece of time because it is originally like 
I think I mentioned it last night, but I mentioned on here. It's basically a Telltale game before Telltale even existed. Yeah. And uh, I do love the fact that we, because of this too, we started getting more and more games where it's like, oh, it's the open story and you can have multiple endings and all this other goofy stuff. So it, it is a piece of its time. I also need to make my roommate play it because she watched me play the opening and she liked it. So part of me wants to make sit her down and then be like, all right, have fun. Try to figure it out. Don't die. <laughs> I don't like the fact that characters can die. That bothers me. But that's a me problem. And Nate, what about you? Uh, I'm can. I'm gonna put this on the stack. Stop talking. <laughs> oh, I muted myself. Uh, it aged better than I thought, like in some parts, but it also aged worse in other parts. Uh, I still think the story is probably the best thing Quantic Dream has written. As someone who's only played like half or like a quarter of Detroit and maybe like the opening scene to Beyond. And half of Indigo Prophecy, but like the story is really engaging. But yeah, it's it's a stack for me. I don't think I'd put it in my on my shelf. What about you, Ellie? You want to do it on the shelf stack or box? Um, stack. <laughs> All right, S- stack as well. <laughs> <laughs> and milk. What about you? I'm gonna take this game and I'm gonna cut Jaden out and I'm gonna hug him and he's gonna come with me to Detroit Become Human and then I'm t- chucking this thing in the box so quick. <laughs> Jaden's great. Other parts are fine, but it's not enough. And if David's Cage wasn't who he was and he wasn't involved with this, it probably would be shelf. But that's just enough for me to be like, no, nope, that's fine. I, I don't want to look at this thing. Except for Jaden. I love Jaden. He got robbed, apparently. And I'm going to cry when I beat this game because of Jaden. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's that's everything that we need to say. And Helena, where can people find you at? Oh, you can find me at Hell Hath Fury on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter. And I'm also at Hell Hath Fury TV on Twitch. And Milk, where will find you at? People can also find me on Twitch at Space Milk Cutie. And I'll probably, soon I'll be back up and running and I'll not be doing it on three hours of sleep like right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Nate. Hey, uh, you can find me on the TikTok, as the kids say, uh, at Nate Does Comedy. <laughs> Yeah, I do stand up there. Uh, well, I, oh. <laughs> you muted yourself again. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. My daughter is playing with the microphone now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And if you enjoyed this episode, over 550 other episodes of this podcast, you can find everything we did on Podbean. You can go right on our website and just search anything you want. We can search our find our earlier episode where we, we went through Heavy Rain if you want to hear our takes on that from god three years ago or so but uh, you know that that does exist there's lots of other episodes we do all sorts of stuff comics movies tv shows definitely check out our giant catalog if you want to support the show we do a patreon a little dog you can vote in our patreon poll you'll see a link in the show notes and please join our discord you also will see links to our discord uh so join that and chat with us I also want to give a shout out to my, my buddy Bill Tucker. He started his own podcast, Gamer Looks at 40, like two years ago. Um, he's currently on hiatus, but he has a bunch of episodes you go listen to and check him out. He's on the show often, so there's a good chance that you've heard him. <laughs> so definitely go support him, too. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to Nomads of Fantasy, another podcast that I work with. And please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Threads, Blue Sky, TikTok. I make squirrel videos now, apparently. And YouTube and audio only. You can find us all on those things. And we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Or Gammy. <laughs>